Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is an axiom. Now, axioms are like the atoms of logical systems. They're the building blocks that make everything else work. Without axioms, a logical system cannot get off the ground. So axioms are a term used in logic. Um, you'll find them also used in parts of mathematics, particularly geometry, um, but only because it's based on logical systems of proof and deductive systems. So axioms are the starting point of a logical system. They are simply the rules. They are the statements which are presumed true without proof from which all of a logical system is built. So axioms are what you start with. You have to start somewhere in a logical system. You start with your axioms, you assume them true without proof, and then use them to prove everything else in your system. Axioms are contrasted usually with theorems. Theorems are statements which can be proven true using axioms, but are not assumed to be true. So you take things that you assume to be true that you would say, oh, everyone accepts these things, and you use those logical truths to go on and prove theorems. Often the terms axiom and postulate are used interchangeably. And that makes sense. You postulate something, you're putting it out there without proof. When a distinction is made between an axiom and a postulate, axioms can refer to general assumptions about a logical system, while postulates are more specific to the subject at hand. Though that can vary depending on who you're talking to and exactly what discipline you're looking into. So that specific distinction isn't as generally agreed upon as axioms and postulates generally are talking about the same thing. They're talking about the things that we assume are true to get started with our system. There's also a difference between an axiom and a definition. A definition is often used to describe shorthand notation that could be expressed with the basic notation that you have available, but for the sake of brevity is not. Note that you're not really assuming something substantive with a definition. With a definition, you're just saying this long and complicated string of characters, we're going to reduce it down to a simpler string of characters. But we could write out that long and complicated string of characters if you wanted. It would just be harder for people to read or understand. So you're not assuming something substantive in the way that you are with an axiom. But definitions are also taken without proof or argument, but you're not assuming something that you need for your system to work. If you got rid of a definition, usually your system should still work fine. So you can take any statement as an axiom, and the axiom of one logical system may be the theorem of another. So one system may assume one thing and prove something else, whereas another system may assume that something else and go backwards and prove the other thing. So imagine the two logical systems below. They're pretty simple. Axiom 1a, given premises a and b, you can conclude c. Axiom 1.2, the order of the premises in an argument doesn't matter. Therefore, we can conclude a theorem. Given premises b and a, you can conclude c. All right? Basic steps of an argument. The first two are axioms. We're assuming them to be true. We're not giving an argument for them. You can imagine any range of statements for A, B, and C. And the third one is a theorem. Based on the first two, we're proving that that's the case by saying that we have that premises A and B can give us C. The order of the premises doesn't matter. Therefore, premises B and A can give us C. But on the other hand, we could have a logical system that framed it the opposite way, that took as an assumption, given premises B and A, you can conclude C, took the same second axiom, the order of the premises doesn't matter, and concluded as its theorem, given premises A and B, you can conclude C. So the point of this little exercise is to show that you one logical system may take one set of axioms, Another logical system may take another set of axioms, and they may in fact show that exactly the same things are true, but they're going to define things differently in terms of what counts as an axiom and what counts as a theorem. 
Something is a definition and not an axiom if it could be removed from the system with the symbol replaced by its meaning and not alter the theorems which can be proven, not alter the number or specificity of the theorems that can be proven. So using, for example, P implies Q as shorthand for not P or Q does not actually add a new axiom to the system since we're just defining what we mean by the symbol of implication. But saying that it's not the case that P or Q and Q allows you to conclude that Q is more than a definition because we couldn't take out any part or any defined symbol in there and leave the system intact. As a philosophical skeptic myself, I'm worried about logic because it relies on axioms, which in principle cannot be proven but must be assumed as true without proof. This seems to mean that there is not one true logical system, but many logical systems, and we can't prove one right or wrong, as they all rely on assumptions. You might say, well, there are some pretty obvious things we can assume about logic, but when you look into non-classical logics, you see that they're able to solve a lot of problems that classical logic can't, though they arguably have problems of their own. And they take different axioms as their basic assumptions. So the kinds of things that you thought might be easy to assume, maybe aren't. What do you think? Are there some axioms that we really can accept without proof? Or does all of logic simply rest on arbitrary assumptions? And the fact that we choose classical logic over a particular non-classical logic is simply a fluke of history. What do you think? Offer your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.